Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Portrait Journeys with Da Vinci. Hello, art enthusiasts. I am Leonardo da Vinci, your companion on this journey through portraiture. In our latest venture, we delved into the captivating world of Antonis Moore, and today we take an exciting turn as we enter the realm of the Dutch painter Bartholomeus van der Helst. His elegant and flattering portrayals are celebrated for their remarkable realism and attention to detail. From the dignified portrait of Gerard Andreas Bicker, to the intimate double portrait of Jan Jacobs Hinlopen and Lucia Weibrands. Van der Helst's ability to reveal captivating narratives within his subjects is unparalleled. Join us as we delve into Van der Helst's world, where each stroke of his brush unveils the stories of the Dutch Golden Age elite. Born in Haarlem to an innkeeper named Lodewijk, and his second wife, Eltgen Bartels. Bartholomeus van der Helst's early life and artistic development remain veiled in mystery. His path eventually brought him to Amsterdam, where he entered into matrimony with Anna Dupier, an 18-year-old woman from a prosperous family of the southern Netherlands who was already orphaned. It is speculated that, in Amsterdam, van der Helst may have trained with Nicolaes Eliazun Picanoi, as his early works show the influence of Picanoi, his presumed master, and to some extent, Rembrandt. This is clear in the portrait of an unknown man, probably a Protestant minister. It shows a man reading a book who looks up at the viewer as if he has been disturbed, a motive derived from Rembrandt. His first significant commission, the large 7.5 meters wide canvas titled The Militia Company of District 8 under the command of Captain Roloff Bicker, hung over the fireplace of the Grand Assembly of the Claveniers Guild, the same room for which Rembrandt painted The Night Watch. The success he achieved with this composition led to numerous commissions for single and double portraits, including his famous portrait of Andries Bicker, the mayor of Amsterdam. Despite being active in Amsterdam at the same time as Rembrandt, van der Helst managed to emerge as the most popular portraitist in the city. His work was considered more immediately appealing than the dark, intense and introspective work during this later period of Rembrandt. Rare among portrait artists in Amsterdam of his time, he was able to attract bourgeois patrons from other cities, such as Rotterdam. Inspired by the graceful portrayals of Anthony van Dyck, van der Helst ingeniously carved out a distinctive niche within Amsterdam's burgeoning art scene. Infusing each portrait with a unique charm, he skillfully transcended the conventional, setting himself apart as a masterful artist. Van der Helst's art not only captured the admiration of the local elite, but also extended its influence beyond Amsterdam's borders. While there's no direct evidence of patronage from Mary, Princess Royal and Princess of Orange, the captivating allure of his portraits likely reached noble circles, creating a lasting impact on the art scene of the Dutch Golden Age. This dual narrative not only showcases his artistic prowess, but also hints at the broader cultural resonance of his work. Primarily a portraitist, van der Helst's body of work includes individual portraits, family portraits, double portraits, and pendant portraits. 
his life-sized portraits respond to the demand for realism among Amsterdam's elite, showcasing clear drawing, plasticity, even lighting, and a pleasing palette. In the later years of van der Helst's career, paintings exhibit heightened attention to detail and more even lighting. The subtlety and intensity characterizing his earlier works give way to a clarity of expression that leaves nothing to the imagination. The artist embraced a more colorful palette, richer contrasts, and accentuated distinctions between dark and light tones. Let us now delve into the captivating narratives woven by the masterful brush of Bartholomeus van der Helst, revealed through three iconic masterpieces. First, behold the dignified portrait of Gerard Andreas Bicker. Here, the artist masterfully captures the essence of a young aristocrat, portraying Gerard in all his youthful splendor. The canvas comes alive with vibrant personality, nuanced expressions, and meticulous details. In this exquisite portrayal, the mischievous spark in Gerard's eyes engages the viewer, inviting exploration into the layers of his persona, revealing not just a face, but the very character of a prominent figure in Amsterdam's elite. Moving to the intimate double portrait of Jan Jacobs, Hinlopen, and Lucia Weibrands, we encounter an intricately rendered composition. In this intimate tableau, van der Helst intertwines the lives of two individuals, showcasing not only their physical likeness, but also the profound connection between them. A harmonious dance of brushstrokes that narrates a tale of companionship and shared experiences. Now let your gaze be drawn to van der Helst's magnum opus, the grand spectacle titled Banquet of the Amsterdam Civic Guard in celebration of the Peace of Münster. As the brush dances across the canvas, a vibrant scene unfolds, a celebration frozen in time. The grandeur of the banquet, the intricacies of each figure, and the jubilant atmosphere are masterfully depicted, making this canvas a true hallmark of van der Helst's artistic prowess. Van der Helst's legacy endures as a testament to his unparalleled ability to capture the essence of his subjects, making each stroke a narrative, and each portrait a timeless piece of the Dutch Golden Age. If you found inspiration in our exploration of portraiture, consider supporting our channel by subscribing and exploring the links in the description for a curated collection of art products inspired by the masters. Your support fuels our passion for uncovering the stories and mysteries concealed within these timeless portraits. Stay tuned for more captivating episodes of Portrait Journeys with Da Vinci, and always remember, art will never die.